the infamous stuck mouthpiece. This will happen to every brass player at some point in their life. Uh, and unfortunately, their dad, their friend, the trumpet player, will want to try to take the mouthpiece out. And like I said, you can't hide from me. I know that you've been here. So telltale signs. Look around the mouthpiece here. It's all scored up. Uh, there's big gouge marks on this part of the mouthpiece. I've got plier marks on the trumpet. Uh, I can see, if you look at it, that the lead pipe has been twisted to the point of breaking this brace here. All of this because somebody thought, eh, thought that a pair of pliers was the best way to take this mouthpiece out. Now, throw the pliers away, get rid of the vice grips. Daddy, you can't touch my horn. Mouthpieces generally get stuck for two reasons. Number one is just in playing, you've left the mouthpiece on there. The natural acids in your body have worked a little bit and have created a little bit of corrosion and the mouthpiece just won't come out. Uh, the other one is some sort of, it's been dropped. Uh, a lot of players like to put the mouthpiece in and do that thing they like the way that it sounds. Over time that tends to be a bad idea. So as we remove the mouthpiece, we'll, cover, we'll start with the least invasive and up to the, the more difficult ones. So one of the first things is just a gentle tapping, but it has to be gentle. It has to be something that is not going to mar the instrument that doesn't have enough force to break any braces. Uh, this is uh, called a Delrin hammer. I've got this in my shop. Uh, we went to our budget store and we got this little brass hammer. Uh, metal is a bad idea. So we're going to take one of our little silicone bumper dots that we found probably in the framing photography section of the store. We'll put one on there. I'd like a little bit more cushion, so I'm going to put a cork dot on top of that. That kind of gives us a little bit more of the protection of the silicone and the resiliency of the cork. And uh, so first thing, a little bit light tapping around the rim and primarily this little spot here where the mouthpiece goes into the mouthpiece receiver. A few attempts and you just do a gentle twist and see if it comes out. Typically it won't, but if it will, that's about as much hammering things as you should do in an environment like that. If you can't get it out with just a, a moderate amount of tapping, then you're just going to have to put this into a bag when you're done with the job take it to a repair shop. This is not one of those things that, that's helpful by having more force, by, well, let me tap and somebody else pulls. Uh, there are special mouthpiece pullers that I'll show you in a sec that work for that reason. The problem is just knowing exactly what direction. It's easy to pull the instrument apart. It's easy to bend it. It's easy to twist it. Uh, again, on this one, uh, somebody used a motion in that direction. So, Bending and, and twisting, somebody had used pliers on this instrument to try to twist it. In doing that, they've twisted the first brace, they've made the, the mouth pipe wrong, and then finally in the end here, they broke this brace loose and this brace loose. So that's just a bad deal. So let me show you. There are a couple of commercially available products. Uh, that if you are a band director or you know you're the section leader or you know in charge of something with the band that you're on that you may want to invest in they're not particularly expensive uh, this is called I think it's pretty much called the Bobcat uh, mouthpiece puller yep Bobcat it says it right here uh, this is available from a number of your different suppliers it's very reasonable this mouthpiece puller is fairly easy to use uh, all of them work on a principle of having something that pulls the cup of the mouthpiece that way while resting on the trumpet itself going this way. So we slide that over. This holds on the cup of the mouthpiece. These things here get adjusted so that they rest firmly on the mouthpiece, I mean on the mouthpiece receiver. We tighten these down. And then, gently from both sides, we tighten these and the mouthpiece comes right out. Uh, on a really bad one, you'll hear this really distinctive ping. 
that's the point when the corrosion or whatever finally lets go. It's a very satisfying ring when that happens. Uh, sometimes it's with so much force that it even kind of shoots the mouthpiece out a little bit and then it dents the bottom, which is another problem. Uh, another, uh, another product that's a, quite a bit more expensive than that one but is, uh, works very, very good is, um, I, I, I mean, it, it's available from one of the major suppliers. Uh, let's see if you can get an idea what this looks like. You'll, you'll be able to find this. Um, the thing about this is this uh, covers a much wider range of mouthpiece sizes, of instrument sizes. This one here is pretty much going to be good for your small tenor trombones, trumpets, and French horns. It's not going to really work well bass trombones, tubas, uh, euphoniums, things like that. Uh, again, it works the same, sim same principle. This engages the cup of the mouthpiece. Uh, these two arms have, uh, they've got some little places cut out of it to mate, match the radius of the mouthpiece and they will rest on the instrument on these, these jaws. So this will go here. We hold these together while we get this in place. Once it's in place, we'll start to pull this. Uh, at this point, while it's under tension, you may need to then put a, a couple of hits and then it'll come out. As a general rule when you're using any kind of a hammer on a brass instrument, it's the number of blows that are effective, not the force. So you're much better to just tap really lightly, just you know, have a conversation with somebody, tap, 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 than to, than to wail away on it. That's, that's where the big damage occurs. So we have the mouthpiece off. Typically, you may have a mouthpiece brush or, or Q-tips uh, to clean the inside is night, but the outside, take like a fingernail buffing file. These kind tend to have three different surfaces. They feel very smooth. You don't want one that feels like it's sandpaper. Uh, these kind of work real well, and especially in the area where it was stuck. We'll buff those areas out. Work yourself through the different grits until it's, uh, until it's nice and shiny and just do a final wipe down and of course I would make that a lot nicer but this isn't going to stick. Whatever corrosion you had is gone. When you put your mouthpiece in, put it in just a little gentle twist, that's, that's it. When you take it out, a little gentle twist out that way, that should prevent most of the sticking that you'll get on your mouthpiece.